Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm in the mood to create a mixed media canvas, but I also want to use some of my new laser cut MDF bubble clusters. So this is one out of the set of four that you get in the pack. So the MDF that these are made from is the low formaldehyde formation um, MDF called Medite, which is carb to compliant. So this is the stuff that's accepted around the world as being ecologically safe. So good for the environment or better for the environment than the normal type of formaldehyde kind of MDF. So which is perfect for doing uh, mixed media canvases because it's got the structure. It's two eighths of an inch thick or three millimeters thick and it's quite sturdy but it's it's still thin enough and pliable enough so you can actually cut it with scissors to actually cut these shapes up to add to canvases and that's what I'm going to do today. So I want to play with some of these but I also want to create a canvas that's predominantly put together out of circles. So this is my 8 by 10 canvas that I want to work on today. Yes, I've already thrown a lot of these circles uh, and bits and pieces from my mixed media junk drawer. Um, just place them down so I can work out kind of where I want everything to go. Um, not everything is a circle, but mostly it's circle shapes. Now I also have this uh, metal medallion from a bottle of whiskey. Uh, I also have this metal crown as well. But that's where I want to place my final focal point, which is one of these Prima Artifact um, pieces, one of these resin pieces. That's where I want it to go. So these are the other bubble clusters that I've got here. So that's the other three to the set of the one that I've got here, which I was going to put up there, but I think it's going to be too much. I'd rather have the bubble clusters, or the bubbles, the circles, going out and radiating from there. Now, as it stands, um, there's still a lot of normal space in there, but as I'm gluing things down I'm also going to throw in some um, seed beads and that kind of stuff into the spaces when I'm adding the gel medium. So a lot of that um, space and in between also in the circles on the bubble clusters here will be filled in with different sized beads. So I've got some, um, I think these are three millimeters. I've also got some seed bead ones so they're like two millimeters but I've also got somewhere some packs of bigger ones too so there's some nice sized larger ones to fill in gaps and holes in there and some very 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 tiny ones that I can also throw into the gel medium once I've started to stick it down. Now, the reason I've laid everything out, as I've already said, is to see how it's gonna best fit, but also so I can take photographs of where things are going to go. So I've already taken photographs from all different angles so that when I start to take this to pieces again to start gluing it all down, then I've pretty much got an idea of where everything's gonna go back again. But, obviously, it's gonna be here where the problems arise, because I'm gonna to have to take everything off to put everything back on again, if that makes sense. So, I'm gonna get started. I'm going to use the Indigo Blue Super Thick Slappy Ton to glue everything down. And I'm also going to put it on with a brush, which is something I've never, um, never attempted to do before. So I'm going to use a brush um, that I'm not bothered about ruining because if it starts to dry as I'm using it, then so be it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm going to probably put this onto fast forward and I'll stop um, if I need to and talk through the bits that I want to explain, if that makes sense.
Okay, so I'm at that point now where most of the outer pieces are stuck down. So I'll have to come on in then. Honestly, Mr. Bentley, can I just stand there? Come on in. Come on the chair. Up on the chair. Now let's prop the door open for you. Come on then. Hup. Good boy. No, I'm talking to the nice ladies and gentlemen of internet land. You'll have to wait for a little cuddle. Right, so as I was saying, um, it's got to the point now where all these other bits are stuck down. So I now need to start removing everything from the middle. So I have to very carefully remove all those bits. And then when I'm in a position to stick them all back down again, right, I can now start to stick these in the position where they actually are. So we'll do the poker chips first. Okay, so this is now where I have to refer back to the photograph that I took earlier on as to where to put things, so the cogs need to go there, there and there, so that's fine. I'll just pop that down, grab one of the cogs, and that's going to go up there. The next one's going to go there. And the last one goes across there and actually onto about there. And then now we've got that down, we can stick going to be a good one. So I'm going to put it mostly around the edges because I can't fill the entire inside so it'll have to stick on where it touches. So providing I get plenty of the glue there that should stick and hold. Now see I need to come further down here. I want that cog so it's in the middle. So I need to add a fair bit of the glue on there as well. So wherever it's touching the base Pretty much. Okay. And then I can Butter at the back of my figurehead. Drop that down. And then do the same thing where the crown touches. So there. And there. A bit too much on there, I think. And it's worth bearing in mind that all this gel medium does go completely transparent, so... I think 
that is everything pretty much stuck down. So now I want to add some beady bits and open these things without dropping them all over the floor. See, I knew that would happen. And I can start to fill in these areas where the gel is still a bit wet. And add some texture around the outsides. And then I can Building it up that way. Okay, I think that is just about all I'm going to add. Now the trick is to leave it to dry now and see exactly how much of it falls off. Hopefully not a lot. Fingers crossed. I'll leave that to dry and I'll come back in a couple of hours. So I think pretty much everything is now dry in place and there's nothing, no little beads or anything dropping off. So now it's time to bring out the gesso. So I've got some Galleria white gesso. Let's see if I can get the lid off, it tends to weld itself shut after a while. And I'm going to completely cover the canvas um, in the white gesso. So I've tried to clean off my brush as best I can, but because it's gesso, I'm not particularly too bothered if you know it doesn't stay completely white white. So this is probably going to take quite some time to go over the entire canvas, getting the gesso over everything. So once again, I'll pop it onto fast forward and I'll join with you once I've got it towards the end because there's nothing worse than watching a repeated process like painting the same item, the same colour for like 20 minutes or so. So by the magic of video, here we go in double speed.
So that's the first coat of gesso. Now this little face down here did fall off, so I have re-glued it back into place. So hopefully that's not going to move again. So what I'm going to do now is add another coat of gesso. Now all that's dry, I'm going to add a complete coat right the way over the top again and then that hopefully will kind of unify these areas that are still showing through with the colour. So I will not show you that, I will actually jump to that one because you don't want to see the same thing again. So I will jump to that now. So that's the second coat of gesso. As you can see, it has unified those colours a bit better and you can still feel the radiant heat coming from everything. One side got the heat gun on it to dry that second coat of gesso. So I'm now going to leave this for a good hour or so to let everything settle down to let everything dry and everything cool down before I start adding on any more colours. So it's now been a good couple of hours to let that gesso dry. It's all cooled down pretty much and I have a, um, a Mr Bottle, one of the Rain Jet Mr Bottles and I've got some um, blue paint that I mixed in with some water a while ago and I'm going to utilise this rather than make up a fresh pot and I'm going to add some darker blue, Bahama blue, um, acrylic paint into this because I want a fairly darkish blue background. So I've added that in and I'm going to give it a shake just to mix that up. You see how it's suddenly gone darker. I want a darker blue for the background. So, and I'm going to start adding the paint in. That's if the Mr. Bottle will actually work. Too good to be true. Now, typical, it's now stopped working. So, while I've got that there, I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it. I'm going to let it run across the canvas. want that paint to get into all the nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to see if I can find another misty bottle, even if it's just a small one, that I can utilise. I've got a small, actually I've got a larger one here. Let's see if I can utilise this. It's already got some blue in it, so that's fine. Doesn't matter if we mix and match. Excuse you. Got a little bit more in. That'll do. And then I can just trigger some water into there. Give that a quick shake. And we'll see what that gives us. Perfect. Right, I nearly missed and got my jeans then. This is going to be a fairly messy process. Look at that. Blah. Dirty boy. So, 
spritz in with the water and I'm going to let it all run down onto this dirty cloth I've got. Okay. more water at the top than the bottom. That's what I'm interested in. And I'm going to let that sit. I'll use that bottle just as a little bit of a prop and I'm going to leave that to run. More water. A bit more on the face. I think that, yeah, happy with that. So I'm going to leave that to run. See if there's any more of that blue that I just used in the corner there. That will do nicely. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to, to sit there and maybe try uh, and Maybe give it a little bit of a blast with the heat gun, but I'm going to let that air dry for a good hour, I think. Okay, so the canvas is now dry with that cobalt uh, Bahama Blue paint on there. And as you can see, it's dried pretty nicely. So I've now made up another small spritzer bottle, this time using the Townhouse Teal acrylic paint from Indigo Blue, which is a much more kind of light turquoisey tealy colour. So I've made this bottle up with about a spatula full and then filled the rest up with water. So I'm now going to start going all across the top. I'm only spritzing about halfway down. And then I'm going to grab a baby wipe. Just clean off that excess from my craft mat. And then just mop up a little bit of that that's dribbling down. I don't want it to go too far. Oh, let's try and stick towards the top and then I'm going to leave that to dry pretty much au naturel and then I can add another coat a bit later on. So I'm going to add more than one coat of this. So it's actually been a couple of days since I last touched this and it's all completely dried but I'm not happy with the way that the paint has covered. So instead of spritzing I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to paint it with a brush uh, and I'm going to paint the lighter colour of the townhouse teal across the top, blend it through the middle into the darker colour with the Bahama blue. So I'm going to make a start on doing that just as soon as I can find what I've done with my cloth. There it is. My wipe up and wipe down cloth. <laughs>
Okay, so that's pretty much dry now and I'm happy with the kind of blending between the two colours there. So, here's what I'm going to do next. Now some of you may remember when I created this canvas a while ago and I added um, the grey paint on first and then I went over all the grey with like the rust colour, the orangey, rusty kind of browny colour. Then I added the patina, metallic patina over the top. And I said at the time when I created this, I wonder how it would look if I did it the opposite way around. So if I added the patina first, then picked out and dry brushed over the top with the rust colour. So guess what? That's what we're going to do with this canvas. I've got my blue colours down, so I'm now going to dry brush it over with a combination of orange acrylic paint and the rusty effect um, texture paint from Viva Decor. So this is that yummy kind of rusty paint that I'm now going to add over the top with that dry brush effect. I've also got a little pot of um, indigo blue burning bonfire orange, which I just seem to can't put my finger on at the moment. Hold on. Ta-da, there it is. So that's that lovely kind of um, burnt orange acrylic paint that I'm also going to use on here for dry brushing. So I'm going to use a combination of the textured paint from Viva Decor, which I will just give it a bit of a mix up in a little while. And then I'm going to start adding this patina, not this patina, this rust effect over the top of the blue background. And I'm hoping, hoping that it's going to work. Okay, so I think I've got enough of that orange on there just to start picking out the detail. I'm now going to transfer over. First of all, I'm going to mix up this texture paste because it has started to separate slightly in the pot. So I want to get it all mixed up nicely. Now this is uh, or does contain um, a kind of fine grit kind of textury thing so should work I'm hoping if it doesn't then I can always just paint over the entire thing and start again which is the beauty of doing mixed media canvases now I'm looking for my wet wipes what do we do with them now they are Hmm. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop it there because I personally think it works better with the lighter color, the actual proper copper oxide kind of look underneath the lighter color than it does with the darker color down at the bottom. So this is something that I don't often do. I'm going to dry it and then I'm gonna paint over, but I'm only gonna paint over the bottom half. Okay, before I use this, which is the same townhouse teal, I'm actually gonna just try and have a look to see what the Dina Wakely Media acrylic paint, the turquoise color looks like, because it's a little bit greener. And if it's greener, it's gonna look a little bit more copper oxide-y. So instead, I'm going to paint over everything I think using this instead. So it's not often you'll probably see me. I'm going to leave some of the dark colours in the background, but predominantly I'm going to go over. See, I'm just going to blend that turquoise colour in to that lighter colour at the top. That way I'm not going to use too much of that paint up, but I'll still get the effect. So rather than you sit there watching me repaint this canvas again, you've seen me start, so you know exactly what I'm going to do. So I will just carry on going and then I'll jump back to the bit where I've actually finished adding all this turquoise paint to the canvas and I'm ready to add the rust effect back on again. Okay, so I got a little bit carried away. As you can see, I ended up covering the entire thing in that turquoise paint because looking at the two colours, the Dina Wakely turquoise is a little bit more greener than the townhouse teal. So this colour I think is a bit more towards that copper oxide colour that I was going for. So townhouse teal resigned and then turquoise took over. So much more happier with that colour for this project. Okay, so now that everything is now completely covered again, I've even gone back and redone the sides. So now I'm going to just use the rust paint, the, the rust paint. I've cleaned off my brush and I'm just going to go over this now from my mat and then I'm going to just slowly start to build up that rusty patina leaving that lovely kind of like turquoisey colour underneath. Just picking up the texture and I'm going in downward strokes because I want it to also look like it's run a little bit. So just pick up that fabulous orangey colour and then in downward strokes it's picking up the lovely texture on the canvas So I'll switch into fast forward now. Okay, so I'm very, very happy with the rusty kind of effect that I've managed to get with that colour and with that rust paste. 
So the only thing I want to do now is just to add a little quote, and I'm going to use the small talk stickers from Tim Holtz and Ideology. And there is one um, little quote that I wanted to use. Uh, da, 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 da. That's it. Put it down there at the bottom. Now, because we started off with one colour, and we, or I, um, decided that I didn't like it, so I was very brave and painted over the entire thing and started once again. So I'm going to put this, creativity takes courage. And I'm going to put that down here towards the bottom. I'm hoping this will stick. If it doesn't, then I may have to put it onto a little piece of card first or after. But just for now, I'm just going to sit it there. So just quickly, I've created a little plaque using the same paint on the um, that I used on the canvas, and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here and just on there, probably just a little bit on there. That's going to hold that in place. So I know this video is about 45 minutes long and I hope that you've stuck with it right the way through to the end. Um, there was originally around about three hours worth of film and footage to go through that I've had to edit out all those unnecessary bits, the drying time, the, the, the bits that needed to be sped up and all that kind of stuff. So I hope it still makes sense and I hope it shows that it is okay for you not to like what you've done and it shows that you can just paint over and start again. So it's okay to do that because it's your project and who really will know when it's all finished in the end. So if you did enjoy watching that, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. So that's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now. <laughs>